Worried about damp and mould? Don't panic. Help is at hand. First off, we need to understand what the problem is. Damp and mould are caused by an excess of moisture and can create problems for our health and for our buildings. However, just like our bodies, we need some moisture in our houses in order for them to function well. So we need a balanced amount of moisture to keep a healthy home. Moisture can create problems in your home through the many forms water can take. When water freezes, it expands into solid ice, which can burst uninsulated pipework. Liquid water from leaks or flooding can lead to damp in the floors or walls. If your guttering becomes blocked, then rainwater can overflow, saturating your walls in specific areas, sometimes even leaking through to the inside. But the most important form we want to discuss here is water as a gas, water vapour. Whilst we're all used to the sight of steam from a boiling kettle, most water vapour is not so easy to spot. There is always water vapour in the air around us. We produce it when we breathe, along with any animals or plants in our home, and also through daily activities such as cooking and washing. If there was no water vapour in the air, then nothing would be able to live. OK, so here's the technical bit. At different temperatures, air can hold different amounts of water vapour. The warmer the air is, the more moisture it can hold, known as its holding capacity. But when there is more water vapour than can be held by the air, it becomes full up and condenses into liquid water. Outside of your home, this is how rain is formed. This also happens when warm, moisture-rich air meets a cold surface, like a single glazed window in your home during winter. Condensation forms as the air suddenly cools against the surface and the holding capacity of the air is reduced. Because air can hold different amounts of moisture at different temperatures, we measure how full the air is by something called relative humidity. If we have 100% relative humidity, then the air is full up and the vapour becomes liquid water. But even when there is no condensation, high relative humidity can be uncomfortable and lead to mould and other problems. At the other end of the scale, air with 0% relative humidity is excessively, and in fact impossibly dry, and uninhabitable. We need a relative humidity of somewhere between 40% and 65% for most of the time for the building atmosphere to be pleasant and healthy. So we come back to balance. Not too dry, and not too moist. Where does the moisture in your house come from? Outside of the home, the most obvious answer is rain. Good construction is vital to avoid water entering a building from the roof, walls and windows, along with suitable ground drainage in the case of flooding. Inside, we have our direct uses of water in our daily lives, washing and drying clothes, cooking and bathing. All these produce visible liquid water and large amounts of not so visible water vapour. Next, we have the organisms within the home human, animal, and plant. All of us produce water vapour as we breathe, or plant breathe. If the number of people, pets, or plants changes, the balance of moisture within your home may change dramatically. Remember how hot and humid the air gets at busy parties. But you didn't have a problem before. What's changed? For damp and mould to appear in your home, you need an excess of moisture, visible or not, that leads to an imbalance. What has changed? Has something stopped working? Has the weather changed? Or have you changed the way you live? Or have you made improvements to your home? Home improvements need attention to detail and sometimes they can put things out of balance. For example, improving windows or insulation is great for heat retention, but if the installation leaves gaps, it can create colder areas called cold bridges where the moisture can condense and mold can grow. If you draft-proof your home but ventilation is not also considered, then moisture levels can rise and push the house out of balance, so a good ventilation strategy is needed. Different types of building in different locations need different approaches in order to maintain balance. Older buildings deal with moisture in a different way to newer ones, so require a different approach when renovations or changes are made. Buildings in windy, wet places often have different kinds of materials and design, if we don't take these into account when we change things, we can end up creating more problems. What to do about it? There's a lot to think about, 
But the key is to hold on to the idea of balance. The balance between the water, outside and in, your house and your activities. Firstly, understand your building and how it was designed to work and stay healthy. Try to understand the building as a whole. Fabric, services, occupants and its context, as all these factors are connected. Try to stop any excess water getting into your home, from the roof, windows, walls or foundations, and also the internal plumbing. Check for leaks, missing tiles on the roof, broken seals around windows, and cracks in the render. This is obvious, but not always straightforward. Simple maintenance is always a good starting point. Try to reduce the excess moisture from your activities within the home. For example, by keeping lids on pans or drying clothes outside. This is not always easy in winter or if you have limited space, but do what you can. Finally, make sure the water vapour generated in your home stays at a healthy level through proper heating to increase the holding capacity in the air and good ventilation to get rid of excess vapour. Try to understand your home's ventilation system if it has one. This can mean opening windows when you know an excess of vapour is being created. It's easier to heat your house if it's well insulated, of course, but remember that a consistent approach should be taken so that you don't have an imbalance of warm and cold surfaces. One more thing. Don't worry about little bits of damp or mould, particularly around windows or in showers and bathrooms. It's quite normal, especially in extreme weather conditions. Sometimes there is not much you can do except wipe the water or mould away. Just keep an eye on things and ask an expert if you're not sure. To learn more about the causes of damp and the balance of actions, check out our tool here. Living in a balanced home is good for the health of the building, its occupants and their wallets.